hundred percent Alagote. Hundo P you Alagote. You hate money, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty guys, we are back. Another week of blind wine tastings. We've got six of them here. We've got no idea what they are. Uh, I really have no idea what they are. We're going to try and figure it out together. Uh, big thank you, as always, to Sometimes Always, hooking us up with these six wines. Uh, they do us very well. They've given us some treats lately, so hopefully there's a few more in here. If you want to get a discount on any of these, hop down in... There's a link in the description of this video to the Discord. Uh, we give out a 10% discode each and every week, so if you want to pick any of these up, get a little 10% off. That's the way to go about it. What I'm interested in knowing is, comment down below if you could have a bottle of wine with any... Like, build your ultimate we're talking shit and drinking wine dinner party. You can have three people there. Who are the three? I'm not nah, exclude me. Don't put me in it. That's okay. I'll assume I'm in some of yours, but comment down below if you could have a bottle of wine and talk some shit with any three people, living or dead, who would they be? I think for me, look, it's it's hard to go past Shane Warne. I reckon it'd be a fucking time on the piss. He would be so much fun. Agree, disagree? Let me know down below. But without further ado, let's get into tasting some of these wines. All right, so first wine, white wine, green highlights, golden hued. Bit of an interesting mix, to be honest. Let's see what it smells like. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, gonna love this. Kind of like lychee, lots of kind of banana, and a pineapple kind of things going on. Very tropical. Mmm, interesting. I'm not offended by it. Uh, I'm not excited by it. It's It just wouldn't surprise... Like, you're at a pub and you order a glass of the house white. Wouldn't surprise me that much if this was the sort of thing that you get delivered. It's gorgeous wines very pretty i'm not sure of levels of complexity here like there is a density and weight to it but i don't necessarily attune density and weight to complexity that i'm looking at sort of different layers of, of flavor it's having got some sweetness to it i quite like it very refreshing simple good fun it's not really yeah i can hear it for too much other than that just simple refreshment it's delicious pub white rizza pub rizza point i mean if you're buying for a pub wine list you probably want to be spending about 25 bucks a bottle and then slugging people about 45 so we'll call it 25 dollars i'd certainly drink it but i'm looking for a little bit more complexity is it too much to ask yeah yum it's pineapple like fresh from the tim yum yums delicious simple good times only with that one Number two, a little bit of a more darker, kind of somewhat like orange -er, amber hue, but still kind of similar, you know, golden colour. Does have that really sort of golden hay straw colour to it. Like that's a proper gold going onto that. It smells amazing. Definitely something that's seen a little bit of skin contact and a lot of batonage. I've probably swelled this one too many times. <laughs> oh, the smell is gone. <laughs> Good acidity, kind of like green pawpaw, lime, lemongrassy things. Okay, a little bit more citrus, a little bit more acidity than the last wine as well. Probably a little bit more interesting. It's heading in that direction of sort of like a nice lift or, or rest in peace, lift uh, solo or like the new Sprite that's coming out. It's got caffeine in it. I haven't tried that, so to compare a wine to something you haven't tried, it's completely ridiculous. But yeah, yowza. We went from something with no acid to something with a lot of acid. Yeah, that, that is like, you could run a car engine on that shit. That's fantastic. Pretty peaky in acid. It's like a lot of citric acid in here. Like kind of, it, it, the wine feels quite unbalanced. It doesn't have enough kind of texture and flavor to kind of balance out that kind of peaky acidity. So I'm not a massive fan of this. Definitely prefer it to the last. It's more interesting than the last. Citrusy something or other. Three bottles and I reckon it's slightly more expensive. So $33 for that one. <laughs> Wine number three, another white wine. Uh, golden highlights, crystal clear, brilliant clarity. There is, there is a seductive take on, on oak. It's such, a, it's such a playful thing. And there's definitely been some liberal oak use. And in a nice way, I quite, I quite enjoy it. I love that kind of really lazy, flinty, rich, decadent kind of style Chardonnay. It's very Burgundian. Chardonnay. Write that one down just to begin with. Now, if that's not Chardonnay, I don't know what is. Like, just based on the smell. All right, I'm into it. Fleeper. The best Chardonnays that I have ever tried have always been really great lessons in restraint because it's so easy to go overboard. It's so easy for Chardonnay to look over-oaked. Man, half the wine industry did that in the 90s. That's a silly Chardonnay. Silly Chard. Very, very delicious. Oh, that feels like burgundy. That's fucking hectic. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, I was wrong. That is a delightful Chardonnay. It's making me salivate. It's soft, it's buttery, it's oaked. Um, that's what they're aiming for. Quite often they miss. I will do this show in an outfit of the boys choosing. They can dress me as ever they want if that's not Chardonnay, but I'm happy to put my hat on it. You know, now these days, like, Chardonnays are starting to... It's. I would. We don't make Chardonnay at our winery, 
uh, not like this anyway. We, we have done some stuff in the past, but um, I, I have a fear of actually attempting to make Chardonnay because something like this, like you need to be hitting your standards so high now because you've got a really good array of, of great Chardonnay producers globally. Number four, faded red wine. A little bit unfiltered, but it looks really good. You know, that kind of light to medium bodied red. Really bright fruit smell on that one. Like really, um, uh, the sort of difference between when you're smelling a red wine and you've got that really sort of like stewed fruit red versus fruit that smells like it belongs in a bunch of flowers as opposed to like at the end of a night's meal. Um, this is very much so like your violets. <sighs> kind of struggling to get over the, the jammy overripeness, which really presents as one myopic character, as opposed to being able to see complexity, width and breadth in a lot of different things. There's just this one thing in like large quantities. I feel like this might be Shiraz. Might be Syrah. Oh, yum, yum. Just so raspberry and it doesn't sting or anything. That's delicious. Uh, 12, definitely my pick so far. Um, $45 would be like the kind of price bracket I'd like to pay for this. I think it's just really classy and really cool. Love that savory, stemmy, spicy thing. It's got a bit more going on than your average kind of Pinot, but it's a gorgeous looking wine. Very, very yummy. Um, very impressive. My number five, it's another red number. Pretty similar in color to the last one, actually. Uh, it doesn't have the same, but we had that Cabernet the other week that you could not see through. It was like a fog warning of a wine. Like you'd need to be driving at 40 Ks on the freeway sort of thing, that's how dense it was. But yeah, that's fun, isn't it? It's like, like tea. I'm really interested to know what this wine is. It smells all of black tea and jasmine tea, like it's lifted, but then there's this really specific aroma to it. Oh, I love it. That's such a unique wine. I have absolutely no idea what it is, but just that herbaceousness, that freshness, that like light, delicate, like garden botanic aspect of the wine is really enjoyable. Go. Cool. No, not quite as nice as the last one. What it could be. Hasn't got acid, I'm gonna go Grenache. I've learned from my past lessons, I'm gonna go Grenache. It hasn't got the acid that I've been told doesn't exist in this sort of wine. Wait until they tell me it's full of acid. I feel it could be Tariga, it could be Spanish, Portuguese, I don't know. Um, I think it's fantastic, I'm gonna chuck 45 bucks a bottle at it and I'll buy 12. The wine that I'm gonna keep scratching my head over for a long period of time. All right, last but certainly not least by the look. Without having smelled this, I'm gonna guess it's a Riesling based on these little bubbles that are in there. They're not, it's not a carbonation thing. Just get a vibe, just get a vibe that this might be Riesling. We're talking about herbaceousness, we're talking about like green mango, green papaya, a little bit of white pepper, really maybe sitting towards that sort of Sauvignon Blanc edge, but ripe or potentially a underripe version of like a Suave. Pinot Grigio would be a pretty good shout here. A little bit soapy, soapy. Maybe that's just from the last one. Yeah, it feels soapy. I don't know, three bottles for me. Yeah, another kind of meh wine. It's very structurally sound, but felt soapy. Mm. I'm sticking with my guess for Rizzo. If there was one that I was gonna put five bucks down on being Aligote, it would be this one, but I'm not gonna do that. I've had a bad week on the trots. Nice palette, a little bit hot, a little bit warm, a little bit honeyed. I would chuck 40 bucks a bottle of it and I'm gonna grab six and I'm gonna press the big old Aligote button. Uh, three bottles, 25, weird place with this. I don't really know how to kind of describe it. It's just not very enthralling and it's not really leap leaping anything out at me bready brioche finish on it that's leaning me down the Riesling path. I reckon it might be pretty cheap, around the $33 mark, and I'll have three of them. That Pinot slaps, well we don't know if it's Pinot, I think it's Pinot, but it slaps one number four. Woo, good shit, let's see what the boys think. How do we go with this lineup, fellas? Highs and lows, peaks and valleys. Yep. Um, some definite bangers that I really liked in here, but um, definitely some yeah. stuff I was like, meh. I've actually missed having those lineups where there are, like because we've had some lineups lately where everything's kind of sick, and then yeah. it's just mm. sort of like, well if everything's sick, then is anything sick? <laughs> But we have also had lineups where I was like, nah, there's nothing here. But then at the end on review, we're like, oh shit, yeah, maybe I was too yeah, quick on that. These were actually it, yeah. like the sleeper one that yeah. Noah picked out. So it could be, could end up like that. I, there was a couple that I loved, some that I didn't. I'll be shocked if this first one's an example of one of those sleeper ones that you're talking about. I thought this was a definition of pub white. I had, I had good fun with this. Ah. I liked it. I didn't love it. I liked it. Yeah, it's, I just it's got breakfast juice. bugger all from it, which is fine. Yeah, no, it's, it's not It's not throwing too much at you, but it's like it's like Moscato shit. Like, it's just fun, yeah. slightly sweet, flavour. Like, it's yum. I only wanted one bottle of it for 25 bucks. So I, I wanted, stung it a little bit. I wanted three for 28. I was exactly the same as Noah. Three for 28. Three for 28. How much is it like? Wow, that's cheap. That's one of the cheap. You might have picked the pub white. You might have picked the pub white. 
Puglia Bianco. So this, I believe, is if it's Pullian, would be Fiano Minutolo, which is a not even related to Fiano the Great. That's not confusing. No, Malvazia and Chardonnay. <laughs> Malvazia and Chardonnay. Malvazia is really aromatic as well. Stupidly aromatic. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's uh, amazing how different that smells to when I first smelled it. Like I tasted first this week, and my goodness, that had nothing for me on the nose. But it's more interesting now. It's fun. It's really good fun. Like, that's bucks. 18 bucks. Put it on your pub list. Definitely worth it on the pub list. Yeah. It, would, yeah. it would be marginally more interesting than anything else that's on pub list at that price point. This, yeah. this with a bag of sun vinegar crinkle cut chips would be fucking really good. That would be actually quite nice. Plug it for 36 bucks in the pub. You're making double your money. Forget about boom, it. Boom, boom. Uh, moving right along. Moving right on. Citrusy something. Meh. That's what I wrote. Yeah. Uh, I I had Shannon question mark. Where's the flavor? I think that's. I think it's Soft really, really chips. early harvested yeah. Shannon or something like an Australian trying to do something European because the, the acidity is really sour like it's really yeah, it's green. really peaky it's really peaky uh six for 35 palette Does anyone knows. want to put Algo Town on this nah no, it wasn't nah. Bad. you gonna do it are you no. nah uh, no. nah it's, it's not going to either three for 33 like and yeah. one for 30 it was for me. it was more interesting than the first Ooh. but one yeah one oh, it's yeah. meh I don't want to drink meh wine so it's yeah, super it's meh it's pretty meh what do we got mm. 32 not expensive yeah. seven, seven years in. skin contact Municipal. Okay. Municipal is an interesting name for a winery. Strathbogie uh, Rangers. Seven, uh, seven year. Uh, no. Uh, put some. <laughs> just just oxidative. Uh, <laughs> no. So oxidative handling on that would be fantastic, Amazing. right? Amazing. Was that kind of pear thing will start turning to like a bruised apple? It would be delicious. But yeah. They've just gone for just like, you know, same old, same old. Something, something like, like banged out the door relatively quick. Man, do it on the floor. Go hard. You can. You've got. You've got all the acid to do it. The label on it looks like the sort of thing that would be on a board game that's about monopolizing a city. No, it's Men Metropolis. Ah, is that what? What, what does municipal mean? Well, I've always known about it. Why number yeah. three? <laughs> yeah, let's get onto something more interesting. Now, yeah, I said awesome. that if this wasn't Chardonnay, I would let you guys dress me. For an episode, it's, oh, Chardonnay. it's Chardonnay. Yeah, it's Chardonnay. I thought so. Thank God. This is the textbook example. I fucking hope it's not though. Dude, I'd oh, that'd be fine. I don't oh, want that you to put me fun. in some outfit that's gonna get me cancelled. I've got a promising career in front of me at this point. Fifty-five, but twelve, for sure. I was at twelve for ninety. There we go. He went, went the whole hog. I had six for forty-two, but given how much I like Chardonnay, that's basically twelve in my book. Yeah, I agree. That's, I mean? that's, like, that's that's kind of twenty-four. That's my price. <laughs> what? Uh, where's it at? Ninety. Well done. Do you reckon this is Tazzy? I hope it's Chardonnay. Fuck. Wow, that slaps. Oh, yeah, boy. Limited that's release. Awesome. The rocket. Yeah. Moon, Mickey baby. Downer, Michael Downer from the Adelaide Hills, and this is his top end Chardonnay. So this is one which is all from one barrel. I think he ferments this in large French oak foudre. Yeah. It's mm. all barrel fermented. One mm. one thing he picks his favourite barrel each year and bottles it this way. That's actually it's excellent. It's really cool because I've had a few Murdoch Hill wines, not even, not just on the show, but it's quite a popular wine to have behind bars and things like mm -hmm. that around town. Mm. And it's cool because like that is a level above in mm. terms of just how complex and interesting of a wine yeah. it is, it is level above. So it's nice to actually have a wine that it's like, this is the limited release, we give mm. more fucks about it. And to be able to sit here and go, that actually makes sense that it is more expensive than the other ones. Because sometimes it hasn't happened. Like we've had some crackers that are cheap, but it, mm. that's worth the money. Yeah, exactly. Like for all, like, as far as wines from Adelaide Hills that almost cost a hundred bucks, that's very few of them. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's good to see more doing it mm. that deserve it. That and are it justifies of the price yeah, as well. Yeah. It's so good. It's good gear. It's so Get some. Speaking of getting some, holy fuck. Talk to me about this Pinot, baby. Yeah, right. No! What? No. What? No. I'm what? Good. I had three bottles and 38 bucks. I had, I had, uh, I had 12, it's 45. I I you guys loved it. I don't, yeah. think it. I don't think it's Pinot, I think it's Syrah. You're just drinking a bunch of flowers, and who doesn't want to drink a bunch of flowers, Brendan? Oh, I just, oh man, maybe I'm off today. I just felt it was muted and it was a bit kind of like, I, that for me was the, the meh wine. Well, I don't know how to talk to you anymore. Uh, I got, I had, I had twelve for sixty bucks. Yeah, twelve for forty-five. You had what? Three for something cheap. Three for thirty-eight. How much was it? Ooh, that's really good value. That's really good value. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Golden child. Golden light child, light red. red. Yum. Yeah. Great. Syrah. Pinot Noir and Shiraz. There you go. <laughs> hey, well <hold on>. done. <laughs> bit of both. Bit of both. Pinot Syrah. Uh, hey, look, it's yeah. an Australian invention, the Pinot Syrah. It's correct. And yeah. uh, it's great. It's always been good fun. And this is exactly what you can get the, the fun out of that blend for. Uh, I think it's really good fun. I think it's great. Number five. Now, I've got an asterisk on this one that's Noah because mm. I need you to tell me what this is. 
I it smells like. I don't fucking know because what Because it this smells is. like my childhood, but I've got no idea what part of my childhood it's, it smells it's like. It's all it's sandalwood and like... Uh, jasmine, black Jasmine, teeth. like all of these beautiful yeah. florals. I did spend yeah. a lot of time in massage parlors as a child, so that makes sense. It I loved cool. it too. Cool. I loved this. I... Aromatically, is confusing. I've no clue... I've never smelled a wine like this. Um, I went to Riga just because like, I thought it was floral. And you said light to Riga yes. as well. Yeah, it looks like I really liked Riga. Uh, 45 and 12. 60 and 12. 45 and 6. Okay, like, it can't all even in the middle of all of us. Oh, wow, it's close. Dude, Nero. Can you rotate it the other way? It's Nero. It's been a while since we had a Nero on the show. <laughs> we keep... Propato! Okay. Oh, no, that's awesome. Hey, that's wow. fantastic. Wow, cool, that's man. fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, we love this oh, variety. Cool. Always have. We always love Coz. It's, it's just so pretty. So, Propato is that other grape variety in Sicily, other red grape variety. So, Nero and Propato are the two. We have Nero in Australia. We don't have yeah. Propato in Australia yet, like, actually planted. We really want to get it here. It's really hard to get clean rootstock. They're all often quite diseased. Well, they carry certain diseases and things that they can't bring into the country. Gorgeous! Yeah. That bottle shape reminds me of like a middle-aged man riding a push bike in Lycra. What, the silhouette of it? Yeah, just like the sort of, it's all like tapered in at the top because you've got that like pointy pinhead with the helmet and then everything is just being held in by Lycra down the bottom. <laughs> Probably don't use that, Lucky. I don't know. It's not my best I love. Work. I know. I, I think that's great. I think that's great. Rizzo? Rizzo? No, six. no. This is definitely Aligote. Wow. 100% Aligote. 100p Aligote. You Aligote. hate money, don't you? <laughs> Lucky, what is it? 26. Okay, cool. That's good. 26. That's good. Suave. Uh, suave, isn't it? Go, 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 go. It's fucking, it's fucking close to Aligote. Yeah, well, it's just close. Don't it's disrespect it's... Garganago like that. It's a great variety. It is a fantastic variety. So was Aligote. One wine of the week. One wine of the week, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, these guys are always known for making really good value wines, and I think this is a very good example. But yeah, it's just a little bit too soapy for me. <laughs> that was the wine of the lineup. You didn't uh, like uh, Chardonnay. Yeah, it's got to be the better for Chardonnay. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's good Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us for another week, guys. We'll be back with more terrible wine opinions very shortly. Oh, bye. And we'll see what happens.